Does the prosecution have a second witness to call now, please? Yes, Your Honor. I would like to call my second witness, Senior Officer Street. Yes, thank you. Senior Officer Street, stand up, please. And write your right hand. Do you promise that the testimony you saw given the case before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Sit down, please. You may proceed. Your Honor, I will now proceed to chief examination with, uh, with Senate Officer Strait. Yes, yes, thank you. Senator Officer Strait, could you introduce yourself to the court? My name is Senior Officer Strait. I am 49 years old and I have been a member of the Zaltanu Police Force for the past 16 years. I have worked as part of the Traffic Control Unit for the past nine years. Okay, Senator Officer Strait, can you elaborate on the job? I have conducted numerous traffic checkpoints as part of my job responsibilities. We sometimes need to perform dangerous jobs to protect the public from potential threats. I am entrusted by law to be responsible for the safety of people of Saltano. So how trained are you in terms of accepting possible threats? Public safety is our duty and also first priority. We are trained to not only instinctively assess risk as part of our job, but also to respond timely, immediately, effectively, and efficiently. Okay, Officer Strait. Could you please tell us where were you on the 1st March of 2021? I was in charge of operating a traffic checkpoint on the corner of Pacific Avenue and Astor Road because we had received reports of drugs being moved along that route. So what was happened at 11 a.m. at the checkpoint? I directed a black BMW into the checkpoint and asked for the driver's name and identification, like I do for every other car at the checkpoint, as a standard protocol we follow. However, I noticed that the driver, Parker, appeared to be very nervous, and she was restlessly playing with her pockets. Her eyes were bloodshot. She was constantly moving her hands and looking at her watch. She even avoided direct eye contact with me. So now, officer, what did you do next? I informed the driver that I would need to conduct further investigation of the car and directed both Parker and Carrier to step out of the car with their hands visible. I questioned Parker about the nature of the packages that she was transporting and if she was hiding anything. So how did the defendant respond to you? Parker refused to disclose the nature of packages and responded in an aggressive tone, complaining that she was in a rush and I was wasting her time. Such behavior is very unusual at checkpoints where most drivers cooperate with us to perform our duty. Okay, Senior Officer Strait, how did you respond to this situation? I asked Parker if I could first perform a first search on her. She did not just refuse, but also became aggressive by flailing her arms and yelling at us. This visibly strange... I object, Your Honor. Yes, uh, what's the nature of the objection, please? The witness is giving an opinion by stating that Miss Ultra Parker was aggressive. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I may respond. Yes, yes, please. Your Honor, that the attitude of Ultra Parker at the checkpoint is actually a common sense that a normal people can easily see that. So aggressively, it may be the opinion of Officer Strait. But then it could be the common sense that most of people can know it. <clears throat> yes. So, defence advocate, uh, is there anything more that you'd like to say about this this objection? In the sense that um, I think a witness is is able to um, give evidence about matters that are generally held to be within common human experience, uh, and witnessing a person being aggressive is something that, that probably falls within common human experience. Is there, is there anything that you say that offends that principle and goes beyond that about, about this particular piece of evidence? No, but the witness can explain how um, he how Miss Parker reacted uh, w without telling that she was exp uh, aggressive without so giving an opinion. 
So do you say that ag- that aggressive is really a conclusion? It's an opinion that is really a conclusion that is drawn um, as a result of observing certain behavioural actions and do you say that the witness should really be confining their evidence to a more specific description of the behaviour that, that she saw? Yes, Your Honour. Yes. Um, uh, Mr Prosecutor, is there anything that you say in response to that? Your Honour, I still keep my opinion about the, the using the word aggressive. It actually that since the officer, and a standing officer, she is an experienced officer, so she mm. can consider what is that ad- attitude before, what is the attitude of Alger Park at that moment, she can consider it carefully. Yeah, so you, so, you, so essentially you, you say an experienced police officer knows aggressive behaviour when they see it. Yes. Yeah. Sure, what, what, what do the other judges think about this? Yeah, so I think it's, it's uh, I mean, it's a, it's a good point uh, that if the witness only said aggressive, then, you know, we, we might be in difficulty. Although I don't know if we would be inclined to sustain the objection. It's just that it's an opinion and it has no deal to, detail to back it up. Uh, the, the witness here said uh, she, she was aggressive and then explained with two very detailed uh, observations. Um, mm. So, I mean, I, 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 I think as is, um, it, it's. I, I don't think we need to sustain the objection, but uh, but perhaps uh, we we can just uh, encourage the the witnesses to and and the counsel to ensure that we get detailed observations and not merely a, kind of a you know a you know a, a broader term like aggressive. Mm. Any judge Judge Bales, I I think that um, that. Uh, and what Judge uh, Wellenbridge says is, uh, I, I'm mostly in agreement. However, I, I think the question may be better placed uh, where the witness says, I believed her to be aggressive, because otherwise it's a conclusion. And then, of course, there could be a follow up question is, why did you believe her to be? But mm-hmm. I don't think the, the witness should be able to say she was aggressive. It's, it's a personal opinion. And I think it simply can be stated as, I believed her to be aggressive. And then the question could be, why do you, but, but otherwise, if the witness says she was aggressive, I think that may be a bit conclusionary. And uh, I think maybe that, that may fall within our purview. Mm. So, um, I mean, in, in that sense, uh, Judge Lasky, do you, are you of the view that perhaps the, the question may not be objectionable, but, but perhaps the manner in which the evidence has been given is possibly it's probably borderline, but perhaps it falls on onto the side of of being uh, more of a, con- a conclusion rather than rather than a description or a, a description of the person's of the witness's belief. Yes, I mean, again, and as we have, if if we have, as judges just accepted that that's that's the opinion and it's not mm-hmm. an absolute fact or conclusion, you know, then I, I don't think there's a, there's a harm in it, but more it may be in form more proper for the witness to say in my, mm. I believed her to mm. be. Mm. Uh, so it shows that witness's state of mind as mm. to why the witness then mm. acted as opposed to the witness saying she was. Sure. Uh, Judge Min Nguyen, do, is there anything you'd wish to add to that? Uh, I, I, I actually think like um, we should not sustain the, the objection, but uh but uh, as a meantime, I think like for the purpose of education um, of the uh, person who plays the role of a senior officials chat, uh, we can uh, follow the suggestion from Bruce, uh, from mm-hmm. Alaski. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, so look, I think I'm minded. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to overrule the uh, the evidence in its current form, but I think, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, you've heard the comments from the judges. Uh, and so I would suggest that you might like to take that on board in terms of how the evidence is going to be received. Um, and you might want to um, revisit the issue and perhaps break down your questions a little bit more to elicit uh, evidence in a little bit more in a little bit more detail than has been given so far. Thank you, John. I have already done. Sure.
so I will now rephrase my question, please. Okay, so Senior Officer Shred, how did you respond to this situation? I asked Sparkle if I could perform a fist search on her. She did not just refuse, but started flailing her arms and started yelling at us. This visibly strange behavior made me reasonably suspicious. Her body language made it seem to me as though she was panicking, maybe scared or defensive, or maybe hiding something. So what did you decide to do next? I told Parker that I wanted to conduct an investigation as efficiently as possible and that both of them could continue with their business if they were not hiding any dangerous weapons. Not just this, Parker suddenly started reaching into her pocket for an object that I could partially see but was unsure whether it was a stress ball or if it could be a weapon. So in the trade, what did you find as a result of the freak search? I found a stress ball in the area of her clothes that she was searching for, but I still had to make sure she did not have a weapon on her, so I continued to do the first search. I then found an important piece of evidence, a small electronic scale in the inside front pocket of Eldra's jacket. From my experience, such scales are commonly used by drug dealers when proportioning out small quantities of drugs for individual sale. Officer, what made you conduct a search of the car? After finding the evidence of interest on Parker, we had reasonable grounds to conduct a search of the car. And to further establish this ground, we found an important piece of evidence in the car, that is a large self-sealed baggie containing white powder, along with a black bag containing large amounts of cash. From my past experience, this is the type and size of a baggie drug dealers use to transport one kilogram of cocaine. Okay, so officer, what happened after you arrived at the station? After arriving at the police station, I received a phone call from a community member, Bertie Walsh, who said that she witnessed, wished to report a suspicious activity in her neighborhood. She described her earlier sighting of an individual in a PDP uniform, carrying suspicious packages from a residential home and loading them into the trunk of a car. So what did you decide to do with this information? During the extended periods between questioning, I arranged for Bertie Walsh to visit the police station to uh, confirm the suspect's identity. I prepared a photo board of 12 people, one of which was the suspect, Eldra Parker, and ensured that 11 innocent fillers were of similar appearance. So what happened during the photo lineup? Walsh hesitated and appeared doubtful of her recollection, but ultimately identified Parker as the person she witnessed loading the parcels into the car, and later confirmed this by clearly stating the photograph number. She expressed high confidence in her final identification of Parker and proceeded to sign and date the back of the selected photograph. Okay, Senator Ofstrad, so why did you decide to interrogate the defendant an incriminating note had been found on Parker's person. In light of this important piece of evidence, we decided to question her further. Moreover, we also received the lab results confirming that the white powder earlier found in her car was 750 grams of pure cocaine. Okay, so what happened during this final interrogation? We repeatedly asked Parker whether she knew the cocaine was in the car. After several times asking, she eventually admitted that she did know. She answered yes, a clear yes, when asked if she knew about the existence of the white powder. She immediately took back this answer. However, Parker's ad answer is a clear admission. Why did you ask the same question to the defendant again? I was worried that Ms. Parker might not be telling the whole truth, so I kept repeating the same question. As per my experience, we need to ask the question multiple times to get an honest answer during interrogation. Okay, after three, last question. Can you elaborate for the court about the duration of its interrogation? While Parker was detained for nearly eight hours, for most of this time, she was not being actively questioned. We made sure to follow the rules and the interrogation lasted for less than four hours. There were extended periods between questioning where she was given ample opportunity to rest, like it is done for every other detainee in custody. Thank you, Senator Officer. No more questions for answer Officer. Thank you, Your Honor.
Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Um, Defence, do we have cross-examination of Officer Strait? Yes, Your Honour. Yes, thank you. Um, I'd like to proceed with the cross-examination. Good morning, Officer Strait. Good morning. Considering the court's valuable time, I request you to be short and precise while answering the question. So, Officer Strait, were you on duty on 1st March 2021? Yes. You then stopped an old model black BMW at the checkpoint. Is that correct? Yes. Did you see two people inside the car? Yes. You then recognized one of the passengers. Is that correct? Yes. He was Dane Carrier, isn't it? Yes. You once arrested him before, right? Yes. Did that make you more suspicious about Miss um, Elcher Parker? No. I object, Your Honor. Yes, what's the nature of the objection? Your Honor, the question that the defense advocate asked the senior officer is based on the grounds for objection as a tendency. It means that the defense advocate was asking about the previous arrest record of Daniel Carrier. Mm. I mean, as, as I understood, Stan, the question, the question is basically going to the state. Well, I'll, perhaps I'll pause there and I'll, um, I'll, I'll go back over to defence advocate. And, uh, and perhaps we, would you like to respond to the objection? Yes. Uh, as per the testimony of um, Officer Strait, I'm making this question. So I don't think um, it's, it, um, it can be objected. Mm. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Prosecutor, can I just can I get you to just elaborate on on the on the objection? How, how do you say the question is is objectionable? Yes, Your Honor. Just as I said before, this objection is based on the grounds that the question that the defense advocate asks is a tendency, which mm. is involved in the defendant's. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, is involved in Daniel Carrier's previous arrest record. Sure. I mean, as I see it, the question is really is going in part to the state of mind of the police officer and the basis upon which um, the opinion of the police officer was formed. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah. As, as I see it, the question that's being asked is, is really it's, it's going uh, about the state of mind of the police officer and how the police officer came to a particular state of mind. Your Honor, I don't think this is a state of mind. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why? Well, Your Honor, it would be a state of mind if that if that statement is, you know, it's like um, it describes emotion, your uh, intent, or mm -hmm. other other purpose of the other speaker to do or to have any opinions about something, for example. Mm -hmm. But then in this in this question of the defense advocate, she was asking about the previous arrest record, which yeah. is it may not be seen that related to 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 for the reasons that Senate officers stopped the car. Mm. Can I ask you this though, from the prosecution's perspective, what, why do you say this evidence uh, should not be admitted in this hearing? Sorry, from the as the prosecutor and from the prosecution yes. perspective, why do you say that this evidence should not be admitted in this hearing? Your Honour, when Daniel would be arrested before for drugs possession, it doesn't mm. mean that. He will be uh, he will be commit this offense one more time. Mm -hmm. There was no evidence for that, and uh, there was no grounds for that. I believe mm -hmm. that. Sure. Um, can I come back to you, uh, Madam Defence Advocate? Um, yes, Your Honour. What, what What do you say is the is the purpose for asking this question? Uh, the purpose for asking this question is to make sure about the state of mind of Officer Street. Mm. And 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 you say what it's what you're you're seeking to establish what it is based on, are you? Yes. All right. What what do the other judges have to say about this? I don't see any issue at all. Mm. <laughs> I don't see I any issue like, at all. Yeah. Either. Yeah. 
Any other judges? I think, comment? yeah, uh, actually, I, I think that um, if I was the prosecution, I would not object to this. I think it would be yeah. helpful for us to know that Elcher Parker was with a known uh, potential drug dealer. So uh, I'm actually a bit surprised that the prosecution is objecting to this evidence, mm. which I think helps them. Um, and I agree with the defense counsel. But I understand the defense advocate's uh, point that I think this is trying to show bias on the part of uh, uh, Officer Strait, that Officer Strait may have thought this and therefore did something because of that. So I, I can see the strategy of why defense advocate is bringing this out. And at the same time, I also think that it helps uh, the prosecution. And this is not tendency. This goes to uh, the issue of state of mind of Officer Strait. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, look, I think uh, the objection will be overruled and uh, we'll allow the defence advocate to continue. Thank you, Your Honour. Yeah. So I'd like to repeat the question again. Did that make you more suspicious about uh, Ms. Ultra Parker? No. Moving on to next question. Uh, did Ms. Ultra Parker provide all the necessary document about the identification that you asked her for? No, she did not. Okay. You then suggested them to step out of, out of the car, didn't you? Yes. Um, as soon as Eldra, Miss Eldra stepped out of the car, you started questioning her. Is that correct? Can you repeat the question? As soon as Miss Eldra stepped out of the car, you started questioning her. Is that correct? Not really. I asked her if she knew what the what was in the packages. Okay, thank you. Um, Officer Strait, you said you would need to conduct a frisk search on them. Is that correct? Yes. However, Ms. Eltra continuously refused it, right? Yes. Okay. You then grabbed Ms. Eltra Parker and pushed her against the car. No. You uh, finally conducted a frisk search, is that correct? Yes, I had to. But uh, you did it without her consent. Am I right? Yes, because I had reasonable suspicion that she could have a weapon on her. Thank you, Officer Street. Um, did you have a search warrant? Sorry, can I express a little concern about any witness saying that what they did was reasonable. I mean, I guess they can have that opinion, uh, but um, about their own actions. But uh, this has happened a couple of times and uh, I, I, I'm a little concerned about it. So maybe I can just express that concern. Uh, counsel continue. Did you have a search warrant? No. Okay, that means you conducted a frisk search without what search warrant as well. Is that correct? The law allows me to do so in special circumstances like this one. So yes, I did. Okay, did Parker say to you about the stress ball which she was reaching for? No. Did you partially saw the stress ball which she was reaching for? No. Did you partially saw the stress ball which she was reaching for? I partially saw the object. I was not sure what it could be. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you continue to conduct the frisk search after finding the stress ball? Yes. Okay, at the end, did you find any weapons? Not particularly. Uh, now directing the court's attention towards the issue of photo identification board. Officer Strait, you prepared the photo lineup for Bertie Walls, is that correct? Yes. Miss Bertie Walls specially mentioned about the PDP logo and blunt hair color of the person, am I right? I object, Your Honor. Yes, what's the nature of the objection? Your Honor, the question that the defense advocates asked Senior Officer Strait is also a double question again. Mm -hmm. Uh, defense advocate, what do you have to say about that? Your Honor, it's not a double question as 
per the test as per Barty Walls, he specifically mentioned about PDP logo and blonde hair color together. So that's why I'm asking this question. Sorry, can you just repeat that? He especially uh, said about the PDP logo and blonde hair color mm. as a whole. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, they are two separate issues. They are two separate factual matters, though, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Uh, other judges, what, what, what do you have to say about this? I would suggest she just breaks it up, that she identified, or Bertie Walsh identified blonde hair. Second correct, identified logo. It is yeah. two separate, fun, so just break the question up into two questions. Thank you, Honor. I would like to be, proceed. Be, yeah, if, the, if, judges, if there's nothing further from us, yeah, if there's nothing further from any other judges, I would probably sustain the objection and suggest that the that the that the question be broken down into the two separate factual matters. Yeah, and and counsel, uh, I mean, unless the my fellow judges object, so fact one, fact two, and then the third question can be, and you mentioned both of those together at the same time, correct? Right. Um, okay, Officer Shwait, uh, did Bertie Wall specifically mention about the PDP logo of the person? Yes. Did C also mention about the blonde hair color of the person? Yes. Okay. Did you show Ber Bertie Wall's 12 individuals in the photo lineup board? Yes. Were all the 12 people with similar appearance? Yes. Officer Strait, just two out of 12 people had blunt hair. Am I right? Yes. Mm. While Bertie Walls was making an identification, did you ask if the person was a photo number three? No. Okay, moving on. Did Bertie Walls confirm the photo was photo number three? Yes. Okay, moving on to the issue of interrogation. Officer Strait, you and Officer Momo asked the question to all Eltra. Miss Eltra, is that correct? Excuse me? What was the question? You and Officer Momo asked the question to Eltra. Miss Eltra, is that correct? Yes, we asked her a question. Is it true that Ms. Eltra kept denying any knowledge about the powder found in her car? Yes, yeah, she did not cooperate. Um, yet you kept asking the question again and again. Is that correct? Yes, we repeated the same question. Um, Officer Shreed, uh, you said to Ultra, Elt, Ms. Eltra that she had the right to remain silent. Am I right? Not during the interrogation. Uh, okay, before that, you also said that C did not answer your question. Am I right? Excuse me, could you repeat the question? Before the, interrog the interrogation, you said C need not have to answer all your questions. Is that correct? Not during the interrogation, right? Yet, uh, during the interrogation, you kept asking the question again and again. Is that correct? She had to answer us during the interrogation. That is the entire purpose of interrogation. But isn't, uh, you said she had the right to remain silent. Isn't that true? No, I did not say it during the interrogation. In fact, I said her that she should cooperate with us. Okay. Did Park Miss Parker immediately took back the sta statement after answering yes to your question? Yes. C just said one word, yes. Is that correct? Yes, a clear yes. Okay, and now turning the court's attention towards the uh, time the Miss Elsha Parker was interrogated. Off the straight, have you kept a record of the time Parker was questioned? Not a detailed record, but we did keep okay. track of time. Thank you. You have been working as a police officer for 16 years now. Am I right? Correct. You are a senior officer. Am I right? Correct. 
So isn't it your duty to keep a record of the times he was detained? We are not specifically required by law to keep a detailed record of time. However, we do keep track of the time. Okay, thank you, Anu. No further questions. All right, thank you, Madam Defence Advocate. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, do we have any re-examination of this witness? Thank you, Your Honour. I would like to have re examined some questions for all senior officers. May I proceed? Yes. Your Honour, may I? Okay, yes, thank go you. Ahead. Senior officer, why did you decide to conduct the fixed search? As a cautionary public safety measure, I conducted a frisk pat down search of both Parker and Carrier to prevent any potential harm that could be caused by a dangerous weapon. I had no way of knowing what the object could potentially be. And due to Parker's unusual, suspicious behavior, I had suspicion to immediately conduct a frisk search of her to confirm that there was no dangerous weapon that could threaten public safety. So why did you say that all the 12 photos were similar appearance when only two of the photos had blonde hair? Hair color is only one element of a person's appearance because there are numerous other identifying characters that make up a person's identity. Moreover, the law does not specify that all innocent fillers must have the same hair color as the suspect. In fact, if hair color was really the make or break in this identification, Walsh would not so confidently identify a particular photograph with blonde hair. He would most likely have been confused between the two blonde haired photographs. Last question for you, Senator Officer. Why did you record the interrogation time of the defendant? The law does not specifically require us to keep a record of the interrogation time. However, since we are experienced at it, we are sure that we followed the law and detained Parker for less than eight hours and questioned her for less than four hours. Though we did not keep a detailed record of the time duration, we have an overall record and we did keep track of time. This is how we can confidently affirm it. Thank you, Senator Officer. No more further questions for Senator Officer. Thank you, Your Honor. Before we release this witness, sorry, I'm confused. I understand that no time records were kept, but the officer is also testifying that they kept track of time. So could counsel please clarify that if it's possible? Yes, I may clarify for you, for your honor. Well, as a stage of the chief examination of Senate officer trade, she did not have any record, but she keep track of it. It means that she can remember the time. With uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I was not asking counsel to testify for the witness. I'm asking counsel to question the witness and clarify this point. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Your Honor, is, do you want to, me to ask the question again? I want you to ask the question to the witness, not provide the answer yourself. Thank you, Your Honor. Senator Officer, but why did you keep the record of the interrogation time, but you keep track of it? How do you explain about it? Well, we looked at the watch and that is how we kept track of the time to make sure that we are following the rules and interrogating her for less than four hours and detaining for uh, less than eight hours. However, we did not keep an official record with her signatures along with the suspect's signatures. That is how we did not keep a detailed record. However, to know the time, we did have to look at the watch and make sure we're following the rules. Thank you. No more further questions for Senate Officer Strait. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Officer Strait. Uh, that concludes your evidence. You're now excused from giving evidence in this hearing.